we know uh, that prosecution, the criminal justice system, is a human endeavor and is subject uh, to getting it wrong. And I think for many people who believed for a long time that there was an unwillingness to right past wrongs, um, that there is such a willingness. So I think it speaks to the credibility of the legitimacy of the work that we're doing, and that means a lot. Is there an element in that number, though, of just some people who just say, hey, here's a chance, I'm going to roll the dice and take mine? There may be, um, which again makes the work harder for the folks who are screening through it. But I'm really proud of the team that we've assembled. Mark Rodert has a stellar career both as a prosecutor at the Attorney General's office and at the U.S. Attorney's office and also having done defense work. Uh, so we'll have to weed through those cases that have legitimacy, but I'm encouraged by the fact that they believe that they will get a fair shake and cook. How alarmed are you? That's Yet there are over a thousand of those cases where men are sitting behind bars you know, because of uh, the Guevara's investigation. Uh, and their families are growing impatient. Yeah. Uh, they, some of them met with you and, uh, uh, and told, told us that uh, the Convictions Integrity Unit was going to be taking a look at those, mm -hmm. but they're growing impatient yeah. and uh, they, they feel that the office is the, or the, the Conviction Integrity Unit is not moving quick enough. Yeah. What will you tell those families and is the Integrity yes. Unit giving any type of urgency or priority yeah. to those cases? So we take a significant amount of urgency for every case that we, we have. And as you may or may not know, with that 500% uh, increase that we've seen in case referrals, the staffing for that unit is around six. And so the volume and the staffing um, haven't matched. One of the things that we want to do, and this year has been incredibly difficult with the budget crisis and determining whether we were going to have to lay people off or how we were going to move people in our office, is that now we're able to see how we can put more resources there. But we take these cases very seriously. We understand the urgency um, of those cases. And again, uh, we don't believe that anyone who is wrongfully convicted should sit in prison a day longer than they have to, but we're using all the resources we have to bear to go through those cases. Are you giving any type of priority to the Guevara cases? We are giving priority to those cases. We're also giving priority to Watts cases. There are, again, what we don't want to do is get caught in those cases that just have the headlines. There are other families whose husbands, sons, children have been sitting in prison for just as long a period of time um, based on other evidence as well. But we have been working on them. There's a meeting just last week um, with lawyers who are representing many of those families in our office to talk about how we move forward on those cases. Uh, how would you characterize the, uh, the, uh, your relationship with the police department, the rank and file, uh, given the focus that you are making on things like wrongful okay. convictions and police misconduct? I yeah. mean, at times the police union hasn't uh, thought very kindly of you. Are things getting better or worse? <laughs> But, I mean, Craig, I think we have to acknowledge that there's a difference between the rank and file um, and the union. And what I will say is that my partners in law enforcement uh, have the same goals that I do to make sure that we're operating at the highest levels of integrity and that when we get it wrong, that we fix it. Um, and so I don't think that there is a disconnect or that we aren't operating on the same page. Um, we go into law enforcement to, to serve communities and to get it right. And I think there's a recognition that sometimes we don't. So the relationship that we have uh, with law enforcement, as I said in my speech, I meet regularly with Superintendent Johnson. My top executive team meets with his team on a regular basis to go over the cases that we have. I meet with our suburban law enforcement partners on a regular basis so that they know that what we're doing. And so I'm very encouraged uh, by the relationship that we have, again, with the shared goal of public safety um, and professionalism.